Using every agency at its disposal, the federal government is taking control of the production and the consumption of food. Their tool is burdensome regulations that favor large commercial farm conglomerates like Monsanto. Small farm corporations and family farms cannot afford the staff necessary to comply. More often than not, the rules serve no real purpose other than justifying the bureaucrats' jobs. This is the essence of the public-private partnership that is part of Agenda 21. The government writes the rules that favor big corporations, who then return the favor by supporting big government programs and, of course, profiting from them. The FDA and other agencies make rules for food content, restaurant menus, homemade school lunches, all to control the type and amount of food available for human consumption. Every dictator from the beginning of time understands that indoctrination of children through government schools is insurance against future rebellion. Like the Hitler yeoman of the 1930s, our youngsters are being taught to parrot the slogans of one world government and environmental extremism instead of acquiring the education and tools necessary to compete in the future world economy. We have also seen an unprecedented attack on, private, on privacy through the RICO Act, the Patriot Act, the Warner Act, the NDAA, the Expatriation Act, and most recently, the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order, signed Friday night, March 16th, which gives the federal government authority to conscript all persons of critical experience without pay and to nationalize all productive capacity and resources within the United States for distribution domestically <coughs> and abroad. That gives the government the power to take anything it wants from anyone for any reason it invents. Guns in the hands of individuals present the greatest single threat to tyrants, and they know it. Restriction of private gun ownership is of prime importance to the proponents of Agenda 21. The UN has made multiple attempts to pass international gun control treaties, a concept publicly endorsed by Hillary Clinton, our current UN ambassador. In theory, any treaty, even if ratified by the Senate, cannot restrict or eliminate any right guaranteed by our Constitution. Nevertheless, such a treaty, if ratified by the Senate, would encourage gun control advocates to renew attempts to legislate gun restrictions. The resulting litigation could give activist federal judges another opportunity to destroy our Second Amendment protections. It is my belief and fear that the private ownership of guns and proficiency in their use may eventually be our only salvation. The Agenda 21 plan is to herd citizens into tax-subsidized, government-controlled, mixed-use developments called human settlements, where public services such as health care, drinking water, food, and energy resources will be rationed, and freedom of mobility will be heavily restricted. For example, the Smart Growth Plan for Richland County, South Carolina, distinguishes between employment-based villages and non-employment-based villages, with special gated communities set aside for the wealthy individuals responsible for the overall plan. Proponents of Agenda 21 are also clear about their intentions to reduce Earth's population to their ideal number, about 500 million. That means about 6 billion of us will have to go. Do we have any volunteers in the room? <laughs> and that's exactly what will happen. The smart megacities they envision will have high population density, restricted mobility, and rationing of essential services such as food, water, and health care. As a result of these living conditions, the human population will quickly be de decimated by starvation, violence, and disease. Welcome to George Orwell's 1984. 
He only missed the date by 28 years. We have an executive branch that rules by decree, a cabal of bureaucrats issuing regulations at a fever clip, an electronic evasion of privacy that ignores all constitutionality, a media that spews the biased rhetoric of the ruling and the elite, endless war, and constant crisis, increasing control over every aspect of human endeavor. And even worse, we have a Congress that are filled with political hacks who lack the courage to demand an end to this unconstitutional tyranny of the global elite. Above it all is Agenda 21, the puppet masters of Earth using the United Nations to establish a one world order to rule and enslave humanity. Agenda 21 is therefore the greatest single threat to our individual freedom. We have heard these arguments before, always from the mouths of those who claim to act for the benefit of all, for the benefit of mankind, out of selfless disregard for their own well-being. And they say it's for your own good, or it's for the good of all. They are so smart and know so much that they believe we should all be grateful for the opportunity to allow them to control our lives. Meanwhile, they intend to be personally exempt from any such plan. They are do as I say, not as I do mentality. And their attitude characterizes the elitist ideology. The power elite know that the goals of Agenda 21 are unconstitutional, destructive, destructive to the Judeo-Christian principles on which our country was founded, and contrary to the basic instincts of most Americans. Most of us know that this stuff is not right. It is un-American. To find Agenda 21, therefore, we must learn to identify the buzzwords that they use to hide their goals. A dire threat. The crisis is always a dire threat to public safety, to the environment, to our health, to our national security. Urgent. Action must be taken quickly before it's too late. We must bypass the usual legislative process because it's too cumbersome and too slow. Smart growth. Smart growth is economic activity that is tightly controlled by government laws, rules, and regulations instead of allowing economic success and failure to be determined by the free market principles that made our nation the most prosperous on earth. A fair share for all. A government guarantee of equal outcomes instead of equal opportunity demeans and undermines the well-being of those who have achieved success through self-reliance and independent action. When the stark choice of slavery versus freedom presented itself to Patrick Henry, his proclamation, give me liberty or give me death, served as a rallying cry for American patriots. At this decisive crossroad in our nation's history, on these matters of principle, compromise is no longer an option. As for me, my choice is crystal clear. And so I ask all of you, what are you? What are you willing to give for freedom?